What is up, AP people? We have a review video on the presidency of Andrew Jackson. You know he will be on the exam in some way, shape, or form, so let's get going. Alright, prior to Andrew Jackson's presidency, we need to know a couple events. And the first one where Andrew Jackson bursts onto the national scene is the Battle of New Orleans of January of 1815. This, this is the final Battle of the War of 1812. The British are absolutely walloped, and Andrew Jackson is the general of this, and he emerges as a hero. The next one is the Corrupt Bargain of 1824. This is when Andrew Jackson runs for president, does not receive an electoral majority, and it goes to the House of Representatives, where this man, Henry Clay, throws his support in the House's support behind John Quincy Adams instead. If you want more information on this, please check out my review video, A Push Review, Important Presidential Elections. And finally, we have the election of 28, and this is when Andrew Jackson is officially elected president of the United States. Okay, we have some key ideas during Jackson's presidency. One, you hear this idea of the common man. Andrew Jackson was the first president from the West. He grew up very poor, and he was seen as a common man, not some rich East Coast individual. Next, we have universal white male suffrage. During his presidency, there is the elimination of property requirements for white male voting. So if you were white and a male and old enough, you could now vote. Patronage or spoil system, very, very important to know. This was get, rewarding political supporters with jobs. And Andrew Jackson argued that this was actually pretty democratic because it led to a rotation in office. So you constantly had new people coming into office. Later on, this will lead to pro problems such as Boss Tweed and other people who take advantage of the spoil system. And finally, we have the Kitchen Cabinet, and this was a group of unofficial advisors to Jackson. Many of them were newspaper writers, and none of them were, appoint or were approved by Senate, and people felt they had too much power since they, were not, they did not have to answer to anyone. Crises during Jackson's presidency, lots of stuff here to go over. When Jackson becomes president, he inherits the tariff of abominations, and this is a protective tariff that hurt the South, and the South is very upset with high tariffs. Remember, tar a tariff is a tax on imported goods, and this is passed to protect American industries. This leads, in 1832, to another tariff, and then we have the nullification crisis. And something you should be familiar with is the South Carolina Exposition and protest written by this guy, John C. Calhoun, who is Jackson's vice president, and he is really hideous. Look at him. He looks like Dracula or something like that. Look at the hair on that dude. And in this, John C. Calhoun argues that states should nullify the tariff, and he drew his inspiration from the Virginia and Kentucky resolutions written by Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. Remember, they wrote those in response to the Alien and Sedition Acts, saying that states should be able to nullify a federal law. So John C. Calhoun urges South Carolina and the South to do the same. Doesn't quite work out for them. We have the Bank War, and this starts in 1832, and it's between Andrew Jackson, this guy Nicholas Biddle, who is the president of the Bank of the United States for the bus, and also Henry Clay. Jackson hated the bus. He believed it was a monopoly that only benefited the rich. So when the Recharter of the bus comes up in 1832, Andrew Jackson vetoes it. And this is the first time a president vetoes something because they don't like it. Now, he argued or he believed that it was unconstitutional, but the Supreme Court already declared the bus constitutional in McCulloch versus Maryland. So, again, this is the first time a president vetoes something because he doesn't like it. Now, to further kill the bus and make sure that it will officially be dead, he removes all the federal deposits from them and puts them into state or pet banks. And this helps lead to the Panic of 1837 when Martin Van Buren is president. Something that goes along with this is, is Specie Circular, which states that all land much, must be purchased with hard money or gold. All right, Jackson and Native Americans. In 1831, we have the court case Worcester versus Georgia, which states that Native Americans did not have to move west. This is under Chief Justice John Marshall. A lot of Supreme Court cases you need to know. If you want to review them, check out my video, A Push Review, Key Court Cases under John Marshall. Jackson ignores the Supreme Court decision and allegedly says John Marshall has made his decision. Now let him enforce it. So this is a clear Violation of checks and balances, but Andrew Jackson does not care. He disagrees vehemently with the Supreme Court's decision. 
This leads to years later, the Trail of Tears, and this happens in 1837. This is the forced removal of Native Americans to land west of the Mississippi River. And this is in present-day Oklahoma, as you can see. All right. Andrew Jackson in Texas. During his presidency, Texas declares independence. This happens in 1836. And we have Sam Houston, a key player there, and also Santa Ana, the president of Mexico. So, so Texas declares its independence, but the U.S. is hesitant to recognize it. So Jackson does not recognize this, does not recognize independence until his last few days in office. And this is in 1837. So the question is, why? Why does he wait so long? Well, he did not want to absorb absorb Texas due to the fear of sectional tensions over slavery. Keep in mind, Texas had slaves, and this would upset the balance. So, so Andrew Jackson was hesitant to absorb Texas. All right, those are all the big ideas in Andrew Jackson's presidency. I appreciate you guys watching. Take a minute and subscribe if you have not. Please help me spread the word. Post this on Twitter. Put it on Facebook. Favorite this in your videos. Let as many people as possible know about this. If you have any questions, comments, ideas, please leave them in the comment section below. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Good luck on your AP exam, and have a good day, guys.